Well, good morning, E-Town. It's Friday, August 28th, and it's the uh, end of our second week of the new school year. I'm Eric Witherspoon, uh, the superintendent. Uh, I'm joined by Dr. Marcus Campbell, uh, the principal, and uh, as well as assistant superintendent here at ETHS. And uh, we are uh, reviving our E-Town Live. Uh, this is something that we started last spring when we uh, went to remote learning and we took a little bit of a respite uh, this summer after uh, summer school and the like and now we're back and we're looking forward to continuing some of these uh, programs so that we can continue to reach out at a time where we have to find new ways to be communicating with one another uh, in a school year uh, that uh, is going to really be very very different uh, and we know that um, so I'd like to begin on, on a somewhat somber note, in fact, a very somber note. Uh, and, uh, and, and I would like to just speak a minute about that while our school year is just off to a great start, we are also still on that just roller coaster of, of humanity. The fact that, that our human lives go on and they are so often filled with such joy and excitement uh, and, and good things happening, but never in life does everything remain only at that level. You know, there are also the bad times and the difficult times. One of the difficult things, of course, is that we have suffered a huge loss uh, this year of not being able to come back and to be in person. Uh, I think that our e-learning is going well, and I'll talk about that in a little bit but I also know that it's not the same. And so for all of us, we know that we've given up a lot because of the pandemic. And then just recently, there was the shooting of Jacob Blake up in Kenosha. And it would be so horrendous to deal with here in Evanston regardless, because the racial and social injustice that is taking place in this country and has taken place for hundreds of years seem to just be ever present in our faces right now. And that shooting of Jacob was a shocker. And to know that there is somebody with an Evanston connection besides, to know that Jacob is one of our own, to know that Jacob is part of the ETHS family and his family as part of the ETHS family is just to, to it just shakes us uh, to the very depth of our souls. And so you know that racial justice work, equity work is a huge part of what we are committed to at ETHS. It was the centerpiece of all the work that we do at ETHS. And to have this terrible tragedy occur and to have it occur to somebody connected to our community just rattles us all. But we've also had some other losses at ETHS over the summer and this week. And Dr. Campbell, if, you, if you'd just speak to that as well, because it, it is family and we got, have to always remember the human part of our family. Yeah, thank you, uh, Eric. It, it it's it's very difficult, um, as Dr. Witherspoon just mentioned, to um, get a real sense of what the loss really has been. Uh, the school year, um, George Floyd, Jacob Blake, so many others, um, and then there are the the losses that we have simply because of the things that happen with life. Um, we recently, just yesterday, were informed of a loss of a longtime ETHS teacher, retiree Rodney Lowe. Um, I taught with Rodney in the English department for many years. He was a dear friend of mine. And um, we got the, the news in the middle of a meeting, and we immediately ended the meeting just to process and to really get our, our, our plans together for how we would make the announcement to all of you and to all of those uh, who worked with Rodney um, here in the school. We also lost a current staff member, Arthur Boney. 
Uh, I've known, also known Eartha for so many years. I taught her, one of her children here at ETHS, just a devastating loss um, with the current uh, staff member. And then, you know, we, another retiree, we, we learned uh, Big John Phillips also uh, passed away recently. Um, and I'm sure there are other retirees and others, but these are the ones we know about. And we just want to honor them and what they gave to all of us, uh, what they gave to ETHS for so many decades. We know that they loved ETHS, gave their heart and soul to this, to this school, to this community. And um, we honor them, we honor their memory, and um, we mourn the loss of all of them. Um, so I'm gonna turn this back over to Eric, who has a, some positive things to share, but we could not get this broadcast started without honoring and recognizing the grief that, uh, that we are all sitting in right now. Eric. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Marcus. <coughs> uh, it, it, it is um, just so tough to experience these losses. And uh, I appreciate what you said about uh, the employees that we've lost, uh, the, the retirees that we've lost, uh, who are just such a big part of our family and, and, and so much in our hearts. So thank you. So now here comes the difficult time for me. We need to transition to things uh, th that are also worth celebrating and, and, and honoring for the school year. So I'm gonna try to make the switch uh, from, from the sadness that we're feeling to be reminded that it's only when we feel sadness that it also accentuates how good happiness feels. And I'd like to begin by talking just a minute about the e-learning that we are experiencing. To all of the families, all of the students, all of the staff who are so actively involved in e-learning now, uh, you all deserve an amazing pat on the back. Uh, we are off to a great start. Maybe not perfect. In fact, probably not perfect, but we are off to a great start. Uh, I would hold up uh, our e-learning experiences and our e-learning successes in the first two weeks of school to any other school district anywhere in the country. Uh, and and uh, I, I have enough knowledge of some other places to know that, that what is being accomplished here is pretty extraordinary. And again, it, it is because everybody is leaning into it. Our teachers just going above and beyond. And I uh, put a piece out uh, just recently reminding everybody that for those who think that teachers are not working because they're not actually uh, stationed in the school, I would just want them to remember it is exactly the opposite. They are not only working, but they are working hard because everything that's always been required is required, but now there's so much more. And as I've said before, I even said it on, on, on uh, some of the E-Town Lives, it seems these days that everything we do is 10 times harder and takes a thousand times more effort and time. And I know that preparing all of these terrific lessons uh, that our teachers are preparing, getting all of the materials out and, and all of the other things that have to happen as well that our staff is taking care of, getting meals out uh, uh, every Monday, uh, all of this is just a Herculean effort. But we are so fortunate that we have the talent and the people to make it work so well at ETHS. And of course, students and families, thank you. Because if you're not leaning into the work, if you're not giving it your best, we can do everything we want to do on our ETHS end, but it depends on how our students and families respond to all of the good things being made available to them. And I, I can just tell you that, that uh, uh, you're responding and you're responding well. One thing I do want to point out, and then I'll turn it right back over to Dr. Campbell, is that um, so since roles have changed and since we don't have all the, uh, all the students in the school, we have some employees whose positions could, uh, could be reassigned. They, they could actually be uh, repurposed because, for example, we don't need uh, the same numbers of people in here supervising the hallways, which would just be one example. But our students have many needs 
that are beyond even what we would normally have. So we have repurposed dozens of employees. They're working, but they've been trained now to be able to have caseloads of students where they do help with a wraparound service. It is coordinated by the deans at each grade level. It is in conjunction with all of the teachers and staff, counselors, social workers, and the like in the school. And we're providing a wraparound service so that we can keep track of students who need help with their attendance, with their assignments, with, with uh, uh, maybe more understanding, uh, with, with uh, just keeping up with their uh, daily homework or whatever it may be. And we now have repurposed dozens of people who are going to be following our students, identifying those who have the greatest needs and providing more and more support to them so that they can have the most successful school year possible. Dr. Campbell. Thank you, Eric. So ETHS um, has shared an enormous amount of information uh, since the start of school in the first two weeks of school. And it is important that both students, uh, that you and the parents and guardians uh, check your email regularly for updates. Staff, I would encourage you to do the same thing. I know you're already doing that, but I encourage you to do the same thing. Um, and there is so much uh, of new information and uh, we're going to work hard to make sure that you get the information that you need in a timely manner um, so that you understand what's going on and what the implications are um, for, for, for everyone. And I, for example, uh, we expedited the, the materials pickup process to help make sure the students have what they need during e-learning. Uh, we had a plan in place. We adjusted the plan because we wanted to make sure that students got um, their required materials sooner rather than later. Um, and I like to think that this is we're on a we're on a, a journey. Um, I want to use a metaphor if we're a plane or 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 a ship. Uh, Dr. Witherspoon and I are going to make sure that you know we stay afloat and keep things uh, as smoothly as possible. But there is some some bit of some navigation that we'll have to do. We'll have to make some turns. We may have to adjust our altitude every now and then. Uh, but we will make sure that we are in communication with you. But we want to make sure also that this is as smooth a ride as possible given the circumstances. So just bear with us on that. Um, students, if you have not picked up or received your class materials just yet, please make sure that you get that as soon as possible. I also want to remind students about our three R's, respect for yourself, respect for others, and respect for community. You haven't heard that probably in a while, and it felt good to say that. Uh, so even when we're on e-learning, we have to maintain the three R's. Uh, you're a part of the Wild Kid family, and it is an opportunity to have a positive impact on our school culture even while we are remote. Eric? Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I'm just going to stick with my theme of uh, supports for students and just also remind everybody that we have built into the schedule a, uh, office hours uh, that teachers are holding as well as a regular AM support. And please check the schedule and understand that is there for our students. That is there to enhance learning and provide the help that any student uh, in this school might be seeking. I've already been hearing from families and uh, they're, they're saying that uh, the, uh, the young person in their family is probably already using AM support even more uh, than, than they used to use it uh, in, in the typical setting. So I think we have a real way to uh, enhance that, uh, that contact with teachers and that support and assistance that's available during AM support and office hours. And speaking of support, we've actually added more social workers to ETHS this year. That's right, we've added more social workers. We probably have, uh, not probably, we have one of the best ratios of social workers to students anywhere, and we just made that ratio even more favorable. But by doing that, We've also ended up doing some realignments of social worker assignments because social workers uh, are assigned to a class, a graduating class, and then they follow that graduating class all the way through their four years uh, until graduation. Same with our deans, same with our counselors. It, it's, it's a model that we've used very successfully here. So I just want to remind people, uh, your social worker may have changed because of, of the redistribution 
of the assignments. Uh, there is a link on our website, find your social worker. Uh, we also had sent out some information with a live link. Go to that link if you have any questions and make sure that you know who your social worker is. Social workers, guidance counselors, school psychologists, uh, deans, all of our staff who is always here and available for our students is still active and we have even enhanced those supports. Marcus. Thanks. We also know that testing and assessments have been a concern for families this fall. And prior to the start of the school year, we announced that ETHS will not be a host site for either the ACT or the SAT uh, assessments uh, through December of 2020 due to concerns about the spread of COVID-19. So please be assured that ETHS counselors will continue working with students and their families this fall to provide uh, the information and updates about assessments and the requirements. And as noted in the email to families, many colleges and universities are being flexible with the testing requirements, deadline, uh, decision deadlines, and waiving standardized test scores from the application process uh, for the class of 2021. Counselors are still running their lessons and um, most post-secondary institutions are adjusting requirements for admission because we're all in a pandemic together. Eric? Yes, and uh, I also want to highlight that uh, we've uh, had some calendar changes and uh, be sure that you uh, keep track of those on our website uh, as well. Uh, one of them is the, there's a new state law that election day uh, is a school holiday, so that would be November 3rd. But because of that, uh, it will now be a non-attendance day. A year ago, when we put the calendar out, uh, that law was not in existence. And of course, uh, it was just scheduled as an attendance day that day. So that has been uh, made a non-attendance day, uh, voting day, November 3rd. Uh, but we've also added three remote learning uh, uh, planning days. Those remote learning planning days uh, are, are three of the five that the state of Illinois has allowed every school in order to really enhance uh, and, and, and improve its e-learning. And so we've uh, added three of those now to our calendar. And I just want to take note, uh, one of them will be on October 2nd, and the other two will be on November 23rd and 24th. So these become non-attendance days for students and, and there will be no work assigned on those days or any work due. Uh, and I will point out to anybody who's thinking about how that calendar might align uh, that November uh, 23rd and 24th are the Monday and Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. And of course, we had already scheduled uh, our fall break starting on November 25th. Uh, so th with the remote learning days, and with the already uh, scheduled days off, um, students and families uh, this year, uh, and uh, don't necessarily plan on it every year, <laughs> we, we had an opportunity here with the remote learning days, but uh, know that this year, students will not have to be in attendance on the week of Thanksgiving. Okay, Marcus. That's, that's big news. <laughs> that's big news. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Um, we do recommend students subscribing to our online calendar as well. This will help ensure that you receive the calendar updates in a timely manner. The link for subscribing is also provided in the same email about the calendar changes. Clearly, the online tools will be very useful while learning and working remotely. Remember that our reopening plan web pages will continue to be updated regularly. They provide vital information and provide as a resource for this semester. ETHS will be making frequent updates and will link specific information and in the emails that are to come. Uh, one of the new pages you will find is for our district videos. So if you miss one of these lovely E-Town Live episodes, you can easily access them, uh, the recording within 24 hours of the live stream. Remember that Dr. Witherspoon and I will be uh, doing E-Town Live for as long as ETHS is on a uh, e-learning schedule to help you stay connected with us and to provide you with the vital information that you need um, 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 to uh, plan your lives. Uh, for this fall, our schedule is the first and the third Fridays uh, of the month. Please continue to join us at 8 a.m. on Fridays. Yes, that means we will be back next week on Friday, September 4th with another edition 
so schedule so the new schedule begins in September and of course if needed we may host more e-town lives uh, more often uh, and we will let you know if there is a special edition added to the schedule but you can expect to hear from us at least twice a month uh, during the first semester have a great weekend and it is a great day to be a wildcat take your line thank you